Republican leaders to hear their concerns about the stimulus bill. Right now, we want to bring in two GOP lawmakers who say the current plan is not the answer to the economic crisis. Representatives Zach Womp and Marsha Blackburn of Tennessee with us from Capitol Hill and our D.C. Bureau representatives. Thank you both for being with us. Good to be with you. Uh, and uh, Representative Blackburn, let me start with you. You have little confidence... Uh, this stimulus bill will actually create jobs. And in fairness, you're not the only one to express that view. But I have to ask you, why are you, why are you pessimistic about the ability of this bill to stimulate the economy and create jobs? Well, I am pessimistic about this uh, bill to create jobs. And there are some specific reasons. Number one, let's all agree that the best economic stimulus there is is a job yeah. and this bill is short on the stimulus that is needed to create that you know tony when you break out according to the cbo when you break out this bill you only have ninety three billion dollars that would be spent in oh nine now stimulus money is to be spent immediately and what you have is eight hundred and twenty five billion dollars of programmatic money, only 93 billion of which would even be slated to be spent this year, and another $225 billion in 2010. And yeah. I tell you, most of the people that I talk to, most of the economists that I talk to say, you've got to be acting on the front end. We know that tax reductions, tax abatements, tax incentives flow more quickly, leaving money with all of those taxpayers so that is there on Main Street, that is the way to have an immediate yeah. impact. It impacts our small businesses. When you impact them, that is where you get your jobs growth, and that's what we need to see happen. Okay, Representative Womp, let me come to you on this one, and, and, and then Representative Blackburn, uh, same question for you. Uh, so clearly we need, we need spending in this economy, correct? Can we, we agree need, on that? We need investment, really, more than spending, and that really is what the problem is. Uh, at the local level, you see governments and at the state level cutting their budgets to get through. The family budget at home is being cut to get through hard times, yet in Washington, they're frank, we're spending more money than you can even imagine, and about 10% of it, as Marcia says, is going to be productive. The transportation and energy investments will create jobs. A lot of this is just a transfer of wealth. And Japan proves that you can't borrow your way out of debt. You can't spend your way into prosperity. We're in a real mess right now with too much government, and nobody's talking about streamlining and getting through a All tough right. time. We're just spending more money. There you go. Representative Womp, do, do, do you have a problem with, with some of the spending creating jobs in, in the so-called out years? Well, that's what is not a stimulus. Don't call it a stimulus if it's just long-term type investments. That's just more debt that we're not going to pay back. That actually will prolong the economic downturn instead of getting it over with. There's well, Representative Blackburn agrees that you'll get some spending uh, in the, the initially, but that there is also some job creation possible in the out years. You, are you okay with that mix? Well, but that's, well, a, that's the problem with the government is that up here, the, the, they use this as an excuse to spend tons of money that we'll never repay. Okay. okay. Representative Blackburn, I, I think I heard you wanting to jump in. Yes, I think what we have to look at is this. Right now, our national debt is at $10.7 trillion. It hit that on January 3rd of this year. Right now, our deficit for this year is over a trillion dollars. And Tony, Plan A, all that spending in 08 totaled over a trillion dollars. The Fed has committed $2 trillion to this, to Plan A. Plan B is President Obama's plan. Now, the question we have to ask is if you add this additional trillion dollars to this year's deficit, does that leave room for a Plan C? We know, we know that our tax reductions work. We know that you can do this without spending and maxing out the federal credit card, which what is exactly the, what is going to happen with Plan B. What if the tax reductions say to individuals don't work what if people take whatever the tax break is however it's constructed and they don't spend it what if they save aren't we in a world of hurt if you if you front load this if you change the percentages on this so that you're more evenly split with tax cuts and spending and people don't spend what you give them in a tax cut aren't we in a world of hurt 
But you have to look at the value that comes from leaving that money with the taxpayer, allowing the taxpayer to decide how they're going to utilize those resources. And when you lower marginal rates, when you do away with cap gains taxes for small businesses, when you rebate all of that sales tax that individuals spend every year, everybody in this country, allow them to deduct that five Mm -hmm. line 5B from their 1040 form. What you do is to empower that consumer. Now, we know in uh, free markets and in capitalistic markets and uh, that the way you work your way through this is to allow those systems to do what they're supposed yeah. to do, which is work. And Tony, you know and I know and every economist will tell you it will do that. What you do with a stimulus is short term to give that little job start gotcha. and when you're talking about 10 years of spending and adding trillions of dollars to this expenditure uh, on behalf of the government my goodness gracious that is not a stimulus that Rep is Representative going Blackburn, in you and were changing filibustering your, your colleague <laughs> <laughs> well, let me get, I will stop and let him talk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Representative Wobb, jump in here. Tony, it needs to be directed at entrepreneurship, small business, investment, not necessarily all this government growth. We don't need more government. We need to stimulate small business and entrepreneurship again. That's where you're going to create jobs. I worry about all this debt even being sold on the world market. China and Japan have been buying all of our debt. That's not a good trend. They're not even in good enough shape to buy $2 trillion worth of debt. As Marsha points out, this is unbelievable debt here. The world market may not even buy it. Then what do we do? No one seems to, to, to believe. I'm talking, about, uh, I'm talking about economists from the right, from the left, believe that you, you can't spend. You have to spend to get us out of this. And government spending has to be a huge component of this. So in the bottom, the bottom line on this, in your, in, your, in your best judgment, what are you going to do with the stimulus package? How are you going to vote as it stands today? Well, the truth is, Tony, we're going to vote no, but they've now got the votes to do basically whatever they want to, and so they're going to slam dunk this, and we're going to go much further in debt. Republicans blew it on spending, but now Democrats are like, they're on steroids with spending, and the debt and the deficit is a huge long-term problem. It's going to make the recession longer. We're going to vote no. Our representative of Blackburn, Representative Wobb, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Good to be time. with you. Yeah, thanks. that was fun. Thank you. Uh, the bailout, the handouts, and the stimulus packages. CNN's Lou Dobbs pulls them apart line by line to separate the pork from what might really fix the economy. Don't miss Lou's line item veto, a special segment starting tonight on Lou Dobbs tonight at 7 Eastern. States feeling the pinch. Several are facing budget deficits that could lead to even more layoffs.